Hi, Odyssey Camper here. I'm about to start my next project. I've removed the console from my Odyssey. This is the center console, it goes between the front seats. And uh, inside of it, I'm going to build a battery pack. So I never really use this space inside. It can theoretically be used as a cooler, but there's no drain. I usually had a pair of gloves or something in there, so I've decided instead to turn it into a battery pack. And I'm going to shoot most of this on shaky cam here, just because uh, it's too hard to get a tripod in here. But originally, I thought I had everything measured out perfectly, and I was going to put three batteries inside the middle of this. And that would have given me 66 amp hours of power. Unfortunately, even though I thought I took the right measurements, uh, things go wrong, and it turns out I'm about an eighth of an inch off, and I can't fit the third battery, so I'm going to put something else in the middle. And the reason is, when I measured this out, I went side to side in here, but uh, as fate would have it, it kind of curls in a little bit at the top, and that's enough to push the batteries in closer so you can't get the third battery. Um, but there'll be two batteries in here. There'll also be a charge controller. Uh, this will be able to charge the batteries either off of the vehicle battery or off of the solar panel. I should say off of the vehicle alternator or off of the solar panel. And we'll put an inverter in here. So throughout the course of the video, there'll be plenty of uh, flip frames as I go from one scene to the next uh, and complete each step. It's kind of hard for me to hold the camera and do the work at the same time. I suppose I could get a helmet cam, but you'll get the idea. So we're going to secure these batteries in place with a piece of threaded rod. We'll put that behind it and we'll use the, the edges of the console itself to support it. And we'll probably put one across the top also so these batteries can't bounce. Uh, I don't think it was designed, the console was designed to carry this much weight, however, it is uh, actually fairly secure. There's a big uh, clip on the bottom of it uh, that clips into the floor. And so if you do get in an accident or something, it should contain them for the most part. Uh, if anything, this should break away and go forward into the dash, so it's not going to hit anybody anyway. Uh, but the nice thing about putting it in the console is I can remove it. So I'll be able to take this battery pack out of the vehicle, set it out at my campsite or whatever, even use the, the drink holders. Um, and then have portable power uh, wherever I want to set it down. So that's the goal. We'll see how it all turns out. The first thing I'm going to do on this project is cut a piece of closed cell foam that fits inside the console and goes down in the bottom. And this closed cell foam, you can buy it at a craft store. I actually got mine uh, with the solar panel. And then I just trimmed the edges so it would fit in the bottom fairly snug. And what that's going to do is it's going to let the battery sit on there and kind of sink in a little bit, but it'll absorb any vibration. And even though the vehicle suspension will absorb a lot of the road shock and whatnot, the less vibration a battery sees, the better off it'll be. So we're going to start our project by lining the bottom with that. The second step is to drill out the holes for our charge controller, which is going to go right up here. And then we'll fit the batteries and we'll drill out the holes for the, uh, the restraints that'll hold the batteries in place. Using the charge controller as a template, you might be able to make out here where I marked it. I started off with a marker and I actually found that something that'll scratch works better, so I just scratched a little mark through the holes in the charge controller, put my drill in there and drilled those out. Um, if your drill is too large to fit in here, you can actually do this by hand uh, with a drill bit. It takes a little longer, but the plastic's fairly soft, so it's pretty easy to just hand drill through. Make a small hole that uh, maybe a number six screw will fit in, and then use either wood screws or sheet metal screws to anchor into the plastic. You want to be careful you don't over tighten it, of course. Before I mount the solar charge controller, I want to make sure I have enough room to work in here, so I'm going to leave that out for now put the batteries in place and then mark the sides where I want to drill the hole for the rod. This probably isn't going to show too well in the video, but I've slid these batteries forward so that they are up against the plastic underneath the edge, and that's going to be the front support to keep them from shifting forward. Uh, because this structure is curved at the edge, you have to move them inboard slightly. Another thing I didn't notice when I first measured this, um, but we're going to use some uh, closed cell foam on the sides for extra vibration ab absorption, and that should take up the space without a problem. So, being careful of the battery terminals, you don't want to short those out. I'm going to take the small piece of threaded rod, drop it down behind here, and use it to just scratch on the back side uh, against the, the side of this, so I have a place to drill. 
and I want this rod to go right up against the back of the battery so it's snug and then mark the edge. Now hopefully you can see where I've got the threaded rod in place. It's going to pass through both sides of the console and of course I'm going to trim that off. I'll show you what I use to cut it and we'll probably cap it off with some acorn nuts so it doesn't catch on anything when we're taking it in and out of the vehicle. Uh, to drill the holes I found an easier way than a drill to get in there and it's a tap handle. If you don't know what this is it's uh, basically used when you want to put threads into a hole that you've drilled but it'll also hold the drill bit. So a tap handle you can get one uh, at just about any store that sells tools. Uh, Sears will have them and you can just get in there and hand drill uh, basically spin it with your fingertips till you get a little start and then it'll quickly go through the plastic. It's a lot easier to get in there than a power drill and it's a lot easier than trying to measure things on the outside and, and blind drill from this side. The easiest way I've found to cut this threaded rod is with this tool which is essentially a wire stripper and a crimper. Uh, you'll find it wherever you find crimp on lugs, uh, electrical department, a Home Depot or some such place and it also has a bolt cutter on it. It's designed to run a screw through and you can cut it in half and so I found they work really well for cutting this threaded rod. Just give it a little squeeze and pop, it'll cut it. And then uh, when you back the thread out, it'll straighten the threads out so you won't have any rough edges. Here I've run my cable in that's going to go to the charge controller. Just drilled a small hole through the front of the console so it'll come out near the cigarette lighter. And tie wrapped it on the back down here so it can't pull out. I drilled a small hole into the bottom of the console to be able to run the wires back to the charge controller. My 12 volt charging cable will plug into this and then I'll be able to charge it with the cigarette lighter. I'll also be able to plug my solar panel into this directly. Uh, now if you watch the uh, video that I did on the solar panel, I've got a charge controller on the solar panel. I'm actually going to unplug that and plug directly into this cable. Uh, when I'm running completely on solar for charging and the charge controller inside the console will handle the charging duties in that case. So using the solar panel that way you've got a couple of different options. You can charge the separate portable battery pack that's in the other video or you can charge your console battery pack. So now I've got my charge controller mounted. Uh, the two wires here are going to come out the front of the console and they actually go to my plug. Uh, so this is going to you know, put a nice scratch in my console. Oh well, no one's perfect. Um, this will run out into the 12 volt charging cable either from the solar panel or to the cigarette lighter. And then those wires run directly into your panel charge here. These two wires are going to go to the batteries once I put the batteries in place. There's also an auxiliary output here that you can run uh, a, a low current device off of, but I'm not going to do that because I'm going to be wiring my inverter directly to the battery bank. Now I'm ready to put the batteries back in. I'm going to run the wires out along the edges of the batteries down at the bottom and I'll use these foam spacers in between the edge. That'll help isolate this from vibration but it'll also protect the wires and keep the battery from pushing on the wires once all the brackets are in place. So I'll go ahead and assemble that and uh, put the battery cables on and then we'll come back. Uh, again, you're going to wire these in parallel so they're going to be red to red, black to black. Uh, that way you've got double the current, but you've still got 12 volts. So I've completed the wiring. I've got my negative to negative over here, positive to positive over here. Uh, the charge controller charges the batteries. The voltage for the charge controller can come in for either, from either a solar panel or from a cigarette lighter through this plug in the front. Also try to get down low on the charge controller. It'll give me my battery voltage. Um, right now it's not charging because I don't have it plugged in. And then I'll also give the temperature. And uh, you see it says PV zero volt, so there's nothing coming in right now. Uh, battery level 12.6, so three quarters charged. And then that's the temperature. Um, I've set the float voltage at 13.6, which is a little on the low side, but I just want to make sure uh, I don't have any problems initially charging these with the batteries pulling too much current or something. And I added one more plug down here. This is directly off the battery with a fuse of course um, and this is a 12 volt accessory plug. I can use that to run my inverter. So I'm going to run my pure sign inverter off of that for the electric blanket 
And then this 400 watt inverter will be for general use in here. Uh, it also has a couple of USB charging ports. What else? Uh, foam's in place to keep the batteries from shifting. Uh, the inverter's not going anywhere. It's between the two and held in place by tension and also by the rod in the back. And one step left to do, which is to put a uh, restraining bar across here, a uh, piece of threaded rod to keep everything from jostling if I go over a bumpy road or something. So that's uh, how to turn your Odyssey console into a battery pack. Um, you can probably use this method on a lot of consoles, uh, not just this one. Um, but as the old adage goes, uh, measure twice, cut once. And I thought I had this measured to fit three batteries, but it turns out I can only fit two. Uh, so I put the inverter in the middle there. Yeah, it looks like an awesome summer day in Michigan out there. Actually, it's uh, beginning of December. Just plugged in my solar panel, ran it over to my new battery pack, and not sure if we'll be able to see this. You can see the little sun symbol in the upper left. It's charging. So it all works. Got a nice 15 foot cable on this so I can run it out away from the van, get it out in the sun. Uh, I've also got a hanging mount for it to go up on the windshield uh, in places where I'm going to leave it unattended for a while. So the last step, I guess, is to put it in the van, and then I'll make sure that it charges off of the van okay when it's plugged into the cigarette lighter. So here it is in place in the car. I've got the red light on at the cigarette lighter. I could probably go with a shorter uh, cord there, shorten that up in the future. But this is my stealth arrangement of batteries. If I look down at the panel, you can see the sun in the upper left. That indicates that it's getting a charging voltage. And then it'll go into a float mode after the batteries are fully charged. So as I'm driving down the road, it'll charge off the cigarette lighter. When I'm parked, I'll unplug that, plug the cable into the solar panel, and charge it on solar. You could probably put a switch in there if you wanted, so you could switch back and forth without having to move uh, cables, but I don't think it's a big deal to uh, unplug it. They call these quick disconnects for a reason. And when it's closed, no one can really see what's there. Oh, I should mention the acorn nuts. I put acorn nuts on the corner or uh, on the end of the threaded rod just so it doesn't catch on the seat when you pull the panel in and out. Still use your cup holders and whatnot. I am probably going to add lights on the back of this uh, just in the corner so I can have some night lights in the back of the vehicle that don't show up through the curtain. I bought the uh, blue LEDs to do it. I just didn't have time before RTR. Well, it's time for me to get out of Michigan. I'm heading to RTR via Austin and Tampa. Hope to see some of you there. Uh, if you see me, backside windows of the van say odysseycamper.com so you can spot me. Come on up and say hi. Check out the battery pack. Hope you found this project useful and inspirational. And we'll see you soon.